Welcome, you're watching Aussie Indian and I'm Ursula and today we're continuing on with the theme of domestic violence. In our last episode you would have seen that we brought you an interview with the two co-founders and community leaders Maninda Singh and Harinda Kerr of the Harmon Foundation and in this episode we're bringing you two interviews with two special guests. First up we've got Pinky Butler. Hi Pinky, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi Ursula, thank you so much for having me here. Thank you. Um, so Pinky, you are actually uh, an avid volunteer foundation um, how did you actually come to get involved I think it's my privilege to get connected with Herman foundation one of my very close friend childhood friend yeah. she introduced uh, me with Herman foundation they are her relatives and uh, and I think I've uh, I feel very privileged and very connected since I've met them mm -hmm. I think my life has changed my story has changed I've rewritten yeah. every part of it and I feel very empowered. Okay. Well, would you um, tell us a little bit about your story? Would you share your story with our viewers? Yeah, I would love to. Yeah. Because I'm out of my story now. I've yeah. created a new one, so it's good to talk about the it's last great. chapter yeah. that you have done, and I want to share that with you. Great. So when I met Herman Foundation, I was going through my separation. Yeah. And uh, I was married for long, 11 years, and I was a typical Indian yeah committed wife you know with all her love affection yeah. and with all her commitment and living just for her household yeah. and even if something happens to you you just neglect that and you don't live for yourself yeah. and um, going through the separation part my ex was in substance abuse okay. and I lived with him uh, it's the first time I'm just sharing that with people and I've got the courage to do that you can see right that's incredible because when you get the courage only then you can share your story yeah and I've lived with that uh, abuse for um, three years so trauma is um, ongoing for many even those who have dealt with it, um, tackled their hardships go through coping mechanisms mm -hmm. um, but what does trauma mean to you I think trauma is very deep down. While you're going through it, you don't even you don't even know you're going through trauma. Trauma, mm. but it's very stressful. Mm -hmm. You feel your whole body is numb. This is mm -hmm. my experience. I'm sharing. Yeah. You are deep down into depression, and you don't even know it is depression. Mm -hmm. You carry a fake face of yeah. laughter, of happiness, of a happy marriage, mm -hmm. and so because you don't want to make your parents feel unhappy that you know after so long my daughter is getting separated you have that fear around you mm. and you are in stress you are traumatic you are dealing with that every day you are in depression you're deep diving you don't have any self-esteem so I think I've dealt with that a uh, long time and I didn't knew I was dealing with that until a friend told me that you are the same person whom mm. I knew like five years back because I met him after five years I said no I'm fine he said how's your uh, marriage going on perfectly fine and he's like no something is wrong you're faking something is not right and I said yeah this is happening but I think it's fine it will be fine and I know it's gonna be fine trust me it's gonna be fine it's just a time being yeah and then I was not accepting the reality mm -hmm. and I was leaving it and till the time I was running 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 and I just fell down and after that, I think reliving that trauma is more traumatic yeah. because every day you get up with pain in your heart, with tears in your eyes, and you don't even know what's happening to you. You don't even know, especially the separation part of it, it's very traumatic mm -hmm. because you have lived with the person, you have all your emotions, you have all your connections with that person and all your memories they come along yeah. and they hit your head and you are in the memory lane all the time and you don't know you, my body I used to feel it's like 100 kilos because I, yeah. I was during my separation I I never even used to carry my body it was yeah. like you know I'm three people you know in one body mm -hmm. because mental pain physical pain emotional pain and going through emotional abuse mental abuse yeah. physical abuse at some level financial abuse mm. it's so much to carry yeah and I think people who are going through it share your story with someone the mistake that I did and I prolonged it for a long time it's that I didn't share it I thought that I'm too brave enough mm. and I can fight it and you had your coping mechanisms you thought I thought it was fine but yeah. I think it took me a long time to get out of it yeah it took me a long time to see someone mm. because I used to be so fearful yeah I, it was so hard to show my face to someone parties used to feel that you know 
where am i i want to run away i can't even face anyone it's yeah. i can't do it mm -hmm. it's very hard i never used to face my parents i used to scream at them and they're like i i don't know it's a very hard feeling because i used to go to work like a dead body is going and mouse computer i used to look at computer yeah and i'm like oh it's been four hours i'm just working on one thing yeah and i'm so proficient mm -hmm. and i'm like okay tomorrow i'm gonna make it tomorrow the good day yeah and for one month i don't even know i've even eaten anything i was just surviving on bananas so guys yeah. <laughs> because you don't want to eat anything yeah because you have got you so have much of suffering you have no appetite mm. you don't need the that kind of sustenance mm. you need someone to come hug you you know mm. touch you and tell you it's going to be fine mm. you'll be okay one day mm. it's okay it's part of that you have to go through that grief yeah. you have to go through that suffering yeah. someone will come and you know or maybe yourself you will boost mm. yourself one day mm. but connect yourself yeah. with yourself first it's great so i think that's a hitting point yeah um and yeah you mentioned grief um for you has grief been a significant part of your life because i know that for many um grief can hit them much long after um they've dealt with you know their perpetrator or their abuser or whoever it may have been so what significance has grief played in your life today i think griefing is a it should not be taken in a wrong way because it's yeah. good to grieve yeah. don't curb your feelings mm -hmm. if you want to cry cry yeah. you know If you want to not talk to anyone, okay, be with yourself. Be honest to yourself mm -hmm. once you are conscious and once you know that being honest with yourself is the biggest thing. It's the biggest gift you can give to yourself. Because when you are at a no end at a dead end where you are just alone, mm -hmm. there is some support I think from the universe or somewhere people like, you know, Hermann Foundation. Yeah. People like soul connections, they come, they pick you. they just give you your hands and you're like you're walking and you're supported by that yeah divine network around you yeah. you know that support network around you who mm -hmm. hear you who sees your pain who feel it and you can just talk yeah. whatever you want and then you're empty yeah. you're empty from inside and then you know your hidden powers yeah. your own mm. thing that you can mm. relive your life you can restart your life you can reset your life mm. and i think it's been a beautiful journey and i thank my ex you know to do that i feel bad that you know he has done something wrong with his physical uh part so, yeah, yeah yeah i feel very bad because it's been a long connection and i was very connected with him i used to love him and mm. uh, it's very um, heartbreaking and heart wrenching yeah. to see someone's dipping down yeah. but i think he's been he's played a role of a guru in my life yeah. because he has uh, he's showed you. me he's taught yeah. me he's showed me mm. that which has evolved me you yeah. know to becoming a better person yeah to seeing life from a different perspective mm -hmm. to feel pain from a different perspective yeah and today i feel proud that i'm connected with all the endeavors with herman foundation we speak to dv victims i've been part of their marketing team i've yeah. been part of you know all the activities that we go around in my workspace i take mindfulness sessions and mm. i'm like wow i was like out of my mind and yeah. today i'm so connected reconnected with myself and yeah. this new path this new journey of mm -hmm. my life has empowered me maybe that's why something happens in your life mm -hmm. because there is a new chapter in yeah. your life that needs to open up well thank you so much pinky for sharing your incredible story you're very brave not to say that those that aren't able to reach out and speak um almost immediately or or never even aren't um but it is something that yeah that that is really encouraged just seeking that support seeking that help and speaking with people um or the foundation so the Harman Foundation number is uh, 1-800-116-675 the details are at the bottom of the screen um and we sincerely appreciate you sharing your story thank, thank you. you so much and thanks for listening to me and thank you so much for having me thank you thank you Well, I hope you guys found that interview with Pinky very informative. And for those of you who have gone on the same journey or a similar uh, shared experience, I hope that this has enlightened you and how you can also reach out to the Harmon Foundation. And make sure you guys don't go anywhere because after the break, we're going to be bringing you another interview on the same topic with another special guest. See you on the other side. Welcome back. You're watching Aussie Indian. In our last segment, we brought you a very special interview with Pinky Butler, who shared her story with us and her work with the Harmon Foundation. And in this segment, we're going to be speaking with Monica Lay, who holds a degree in psychology 
and is also a domestic violence case manager. Thank you so much for joining us, Monica. Thank you for having me. Yes, it's well. lovely to have you on the show. Thank you for taking the time out to speak with us today. It's great to be here. So um, is it fair to say that there is a stigma around um, victims of family violence uh, within the Indian Australian community? Um, and how can we as a community or members of the community work to change that? Yeah, I think that would be a very fair statement. Yeah. Um, but first of all, I would like to qualify that statement yeah. and just say that domestic violence and family violence is widespread across all cultures yeah the entire world yes yeah. um so it's not anything particularly about indian culture that is bad yeah um because you know there as i said domestic violence is yeah widespread yeah, every culture mm -hmm. every religion every yeah. ethnicity um it is unfortunately there yeah um having said that in the indian community um i would say that there are additional um issues that cause an added level of stigma yeah. um, around DV victims. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say that it's probably largely due to um, a stronger adherence to gender roles. Yeah. Um, like okay. those traditional gender roles. Yeah. So, um, I appreciate that. Yeah, I'll give mm. an example of like the, the okay. female side because yeah. um, as you're probably aware, most domestic violence victims are female. Yeah. Um, so in terms of traditional gender roles, um, the typical Indian girl, mm -hmm. um, and I say Indian just because yeah. um, of the context, but this is the same in many multicultural groups, mm -hmm. where the typical young girl will grow up exposed to stereotypes and expectations mm -hmm. where um, she'll be expected to, um, to be accommodating and yeah. agreeable and always smile and um, be ready to give everyone a kiss when they when she arrives at a guest house mm -hmm. and um, to always be compliant with whatever is yeah. asked of her. Um, so she grows up and the stories that she's hearing is you're going to get married and find a man that will take care of you yeah. and then you will be happy mm. and you'll become a mother and your life will be complete. And yeah. that's the goal that is set for these little girls. So they grow up thinking, yes, that's what I'm going to grow up and do. And then they get into a relationship Unfortunately, sometimes one where um, it is more conducive to domestic violence mm. with these expectations of, yes, I'm now going to be happy and devote my entire life to this man and form my entire identity around being a wife and a mother mm -hmm. so that when domestic violence occurs, it's so difficult for her to leave because she doesn't have anything else. Yeah. that she's built for herself. Mm -hmm. All of her life's goals, ever since she was a little child, has been to become that mother, yeah. that wife. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, jeopardizing that because like even thinking about having to leave her husband, yeah. um, that, that's a lot for an individual to handle. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, so in addition to those gender roles which are so entrenched in the little girl who grows up to be that woman who's stuck in an abusive relationship, mm around her, her own family, are also buying into these traditional gender mm. roles. So when she decides to leave the marriage, um, if she decides to leave the marriage, often these Indian women are being blamed. Mm. So this victim blaming is yeah. so rampant <clears throat> where it's, it's often perceived as this woman is choosing to rock the boat and disturb mm. the peace and yeah. put her own needs, her selfishness, before her, those of her children and her husband, mm -hmm. um, which is such a shame because um, research has shown that obviously when a parent is does not have the mental health um, and is not provided with basic human rights, yeah. their ability to parent and to be in a role model for children just completely goes out the window. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of these women, they are mis misinformed as to what the best way to be a good mother in yeah. that situation is. Yeah. Um, and it is to get help and leave the abuse. That is what's best for the children. Mm. But of course, that's not the message that is shared amongst the Indian community. Yeah. In the mm -hmm. Indian community, it's often the message that in a family, if there's domestic violence, it's their business. Mm -hmm. The woman's job is to stay with her husband, be a dutiful wife, put the needs of her children and the husband before her own. And if she complains or if she um, brings negative attention to her family, then 
it's, it's almost a disgrace. It's a shameful thing that she's doing to her family. Um, so I've encountered quite a few cases where, you know, clients have told me that the reason why they have stayed with their abusive partner was because their own parents said that they had to. Oh. So, and this is in the face of severe physical, emotional, sexual violence, um, where children have witnessed this abuse in the home, um, and and the woman's parents themselves because they buy in so heavily to these traditional gender roles, they can't even support their daughter and say, yes, you need mm -hmm. to leave and put your safety and the, the safety of your children first. Terribly sad. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so yeah. Um, a lot of the clients that I do work with, um, either they have just moved into Australia because yeah. they're on a spousal visa, yeah. um, or families that have just moved across as a family unit. Yeah, okay. And so, um, yeah, it can be difficult for yeah. them to um, settle yeah. in New South Wales, mm -hmm. in Australia, um, especially with their language barriers. Yeah. Um, culture shock yeah. is very real. Yeah. Um, so it is really helpful that there are these services that are culture specific and yeah. catering to culturally and linguistically diverse yeah. individuals. Um, because I think it is a really important part of their service delivery that yep. they are accessing within the wider mainstream yeah. services. Okay. And there are many domestic violence um, advoca advocacy groups, sorry, who are voicing loudly that the government um, needs to offer more support. Um, what do you think about this? And do you think, especially with um, now, because of COVID-19 as a result um, of this pandemic and because of the restrictions that recently came about, um, are those temporary migrants more vulnerable? What are the statistics? How do they compare to pre-pandemic life? Yeah, um, I think it's safe to say that there has been a surge in domestic violence, domestic and mm. family violence, I should yeah. say. Um, unfortunately, um, you know, it's like a perfect storm where yeah. with COVID, um, people were having to socially isolate. So they were mm. stuck in the homes. Yeah. So that means that pre-existing cases of domestic and family violence were amplified, mm. where victims were stuck, physically stuck indoors mm -hmm. with their perpetrators. Yeah. Um, so that, you know, previously when social isolation wasn't, mm -hmm. um, wasn't happening, victims would maybe get a few hours at least to themselves during okay. the day. But with COVID restrictions, that's, it's just been 24 hours being stuck in that abusive environment. Mm. Um, and, you know, in addition to that, there's been loss of employment. So we've seen alcoholism rising, um, as well as the stress and the, uh, the decrease in quality of life that comes with social isolation and the, all the pressures of being in a pandemic um, and having the kids at home as well and having mm. to homeschool. Yeah. Um, it is a perfect storm where, you know, perpetrators are going to have more on their plates. They're going to be more stressed. And so unfortunately that is going to make the domestic violence worse and yep. victims are having to bear the brunt of that. It's so um, simple, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, and so we have seen an increase mm -hmm. in, the, um, in the services that are accessed. Yeah. So I think 1-800-RESPECT yep. um, calls have Oh no, the online tool has okay. been seen an increase in 38% wow. since the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and I know research Great. from the UN has estimated an increase in 15 million cases of domestic violence. 15 million? Yeah, worldwide um, in relation to COVID. And it's not only because of all the factors that I said, the perfect storm, but it's also because um, there's been a lot of disruption to um, violence prevention services across the entire globe. And so that means that these cases that may have been prevented from going into full-blown domestic violence, that the services weren't being accessed because yeah. they were closed, and so they are unfortunately progressing to that stage. So I'd say that the ramifications of COVID have been immense, unfortunately, mm -hmm. on domestic and family violence. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's, it's going to take a lot of collaboration and hard work from yeah everyone in the entire community, not just those working on the front line, okay. to <clears throat> yeah, really support the domestic violence victims that will hopefully slowly come forward, yeah. or if not, at least secretly be accessing these services yeah. in their own way that they are comfortable. Great, and in effect, um, services, I guess, available also to the perpetrators. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah.